Hello and welcome. I'm Nate Fearful 2 and this is just a small episode to tell you how to calibrate your 3D printer, the Vector 3. Anyway, this is how you do it. In order to do it, you need to have the Vector 3 software, the 3D Create and Print software, which you get from their website. There, there's links everywhere to that. I'll put a link in the description below. Once you've installed the software, what you then need to do is click on Config at the top, then go to Calibration Setup, and it will show you the Calibration Setup window on the screen. Now you need some pretty good calibration here with the printer. So it's quite important that you get this part right. So what you wanna do first is actually turn the printer on. I haven't actually done that yet. And now you'll hear the printer spin up as it does. Mine's pretty loud. I wanna try and get rid of that noise because it's really annoying. Once the printer is ready and started, click the connect button. Your printer will eventually beep to life as it usually does when you start a print. Uh, well, I suppose you may not have actually done any printing yet if you're just calibrating the printer now. It will click into all three positions, hopefully. And now what you want to do is you need to make sure the bed is level. So you need to make sure it's flat. And this is probably the hardest part. I'm not going to lie. This part takes a fair bit of time. There isn't really any kind of special knack to it, apart from... You have five areas on this screen here. Maybe get the center about right first and then go to C and then D and then make sure it's level that way. And then do B and A and make sure it's level that way. On the software, there's a little bit, there, well, there's a quite a big arrow on the right side. You need to pull your print uh, board up to the top and to uh, barely touching the tip. So in order to do that, you just keep clicking it up. It's usually around about the 130 mark, maybe 1281 uh, was my last setting on it. And at this point, you can actually just open the printer up. I have used a little trick on there, which is inside the printer, the Z-axis switch, which connects down here, I just disconnected it. I just unplugged it. You can do that, and it works fine without that. Uh, it also means that it never registers you putting that down or up. It maybe takes the safety away a little bit in the sense of if you lift it up, it's not going to stop the printer. I've had more issues with the printer just stopping randomly than actually which have been caused by that. So it's a, it's a big load off my mind now. Okay, so I just clicked uh, connecting the software. We're going to move the print bed up with the big arrow on the right. Uh, usually it sits at around about 128 for me. It might be different for you. It depends on how long you left the uh, the actual print head and how low it is. You could probably get a good 130 out of it. 130, and it hits the tip. There we go. Okay, so we want to go back down one, back down two. It's definitely not touching anymore. So that's at one two. That's at 128 now. Uh, they say the actual thickness is about that of a piece of paper. So as long as you can fit any kind of bit of paper between the tip and the uh, base, it's okay. But this is in the default position. So what you want to do is press A and it will pull this over to A. Uh, you can kind of see underneath that it may be a little bit bent to the left. Uh, but that's okay because this is pretty solid anyway. Like, oh, that's dangerous. Uh, yeah, so you want to make sure it's nice and tight here anyway. So like, you can move it, but not a huge amount. So it's not a, it's not a big issue uh, at the moment. So you want to move it across to B. And it didn't touch anything, so that's good. So we move it back across to A. Now what we want to do is just try and get this as close as we can. So we'll go up another 0.10, and then another. So we have a bit of paper here. What we're just going to do is try and get this underneath the tip. This is not possible right now. So we go down by a mil. We put that in there. We we'll go back up. And now we just want to make sure. I'd say 128.3 is maybe too close. 128.2. That's pretty free. It's free enough anyway. We'll move it across. 
Now we just need to make sure it's not actually touching the base here. Uh, one good way you can do this as well is to actually put a light behind it on the other side. So like, we go like this. You can't really see it very well on the camera because it's a bad angle, but wait, let me just move this. It's back to eight. Put a light behind it. You can kind of, I don't know how well you can see it on the actual uh, video, but for me, you can kind of see that it is uh, very slightly off the off the base. So now we need to move it there. So we'll do this over here like this. And it does seem to be... Uh, like two millimeters actually different. So that's uh, obviously not good. This side seems pretty tight, which is good. So we go back to C, and surprisingly, <laughs> this this is gonna really be annoying because what we need to do is we need to tighten one of the screws, uh, actually loosen one of the screws underneath. So what we'll do is we will try and unscrew that a little bit. So now, after adjusting that, we're gonna do we're gonna go behind it, and that's too that's probably too much. Actually, I'd say that one's about right. You can kind of see a tiny gap open up between them. So that's 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 my best way of actually finding out how close it is. But you do need to go back over all the other ones once that is once that has actually happened because sometimes that does proper change everything. I'd say at the moment it's close enough. Now, that is good for me, I think. Once we're ready to do that test, or once we're ready to finish that off, you can press set height on the calibration setup window. It will do its bibs, it will return to uh, normal as it does, and then it will all be done, and that's good. Um, now, I mean, this is obviously gonna be pretty difficult for some. It, it's pretty difficult for me when I have to do it as well. But hopefully, it'll only have to be done once. And then after that, you can just kind of leave it the way it should be. Now, I don't actually have the hex screws in uh, to tighten that up. But what you do now usually is tighten them up. That will set the build plate for the foreseeable future. You don't have to print in, free, free, in the 3D Create and Print software. I've done a tutorial already on how to use Repetia, uh, which does seem to work pretty well. I'm going to do a test print, uh, which I will not, uh, which I'll leave out this video anyway. But um, yeah, there you go. If you guys have any questions, leave it in the comment section below, uh, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. But yeah, this is how I've been doing it so far. Don't forget to subscribe. Let me know what you think. Farmer Twist. That's at Nathan42, and thanks for watching.